Hi, welcome back to the channel. Um, it's been a little bit. I've been busy building projects for customers and um, doing commission work. Uh, with, that's with a lot of power tools and some hand tool stuff. Um, but today I was hand chopping some mortises. So I figured I'd run the camera and do a video on how to hand chop um, a mortise with a mortise chisel and the process to do so. It's not gonna be a complete how-to, but it'll just be a quick video, or it may not quick, but, a, but it's rough instructions on how to chop a mortise with a pig sticker style mortise chisel. And I hope it'll be of help to some people. And um, yeah, so I don't do this type of mortising a whole lot because a lot of projects with my commission work is sort of non-traditional, more modern style of tables, so the mortise and tenon doesn't come into play as much. But I figured I'd take you along on this because, as with the, um, because it goes with what I'm trying to do with the channel with all the hand tool stuff, and it's sort of easy for me to, while I'm working on a project, to bring you guys along and just shoot a little video about how to hand chop a mortise. So I hope you enjoy, and I hope it helps someone who's struggling with chopping a mortise. I said, this, more thing I'm doing here is on a commission piece. So yes, you'll see saw marks and, and everything because it's uh, a piece I'm doing for somebody. So I'm trying to get it done the most economical and efficient way possible. Um, it's not, you know, I'm not trying to do a piece whole traditional here. This is just where traditional um, is easier than setting up a mortising machine. Uh, so here is the tenon piece or the, it's a bed. So this is the footboard. So this is, you know, two two-inch tenons, and just a d typical double, double, um, double tenon. And here is the corresponding piece. I have it all marked out. Um, it needs to have a half-inch reveal in the front, and the tenon is about. I didn't even measure the the, the mortise chisel, but the tenon is a five-sixteenths tenon. To match this um, mortise chisel like that and how I used to mark that was uh, this mortise gauge and it's actually as small as it can go just fits this mortise chisel so as you can see the points line up with the chisel so for this design it's a bed this is the front leg the apron's gonna come out like this with a half inch reveal oh sorry with a half inch reveal in the front so because of this and there's gonna be a mattress going in here this uh, apron or uh, piece of the footboard has to uh, be flush with the back so it doesn't catch or there's no weird like uh, step where the mattress is. So for this, I just took the mortise gauge. I marked out, I took the tenon piece and marked out exactly where the tenons land. And then I took the mortise gauge so that Planned it out so that everything's flush with the back side. Usually you'd mark from the face, but because I want it flush with the back, it was just easier to do it this way. Um, where This is 100% truly square though. Not like typical hand tool work where you have two reference faces, but this was 100% square. So I just went with setting that right off the back. So I know, knew it would be flush off the back because that was a really important part where the half inch reveal, if it's a little bit more, a little bit less, no one's gonna see it. So that's how I set it up. Now, when you're mortising, you want it on a nice flat surface and a hold fast is great for this to hold it down. So as you'll see here, now my hold fast holes aren't perfectly placed. So I got it as close to the leg as I could so that the force of driving the mortise will land, you know, will the force will be coming down as best it can on that leg, not somewhere in the middle where it's not supported. So get the hold fast in place, just where it's comfortable on the piece. Hold fast in. All right, so now to start chopping the mortise. I'm going to start about an eighth of an inch from back from here, and I'm just gonna slowly start a V shape in the piece. And I'm gonna line up just with both sides, like that. I'm gonna move up about an eighth, another chop. I'm going to leave that piece right where it sits and come up another eighth or so another chop come up another eighth another light chop and then now i'm going to lever 
And that's what I should add. These mortar chisels are this beefy and big because you're meant to just chop and lever. And this chisel is nowhere near like shaving sharp because it doesn't need to be. It's just a brute tool made to chop. So once I get that started, I'll take the, the chisel and just break off those chips. I'm going to come back here and just clean up those few little chips there. Always leave me a little bit to lever on back here so you don't damage your piece. And now, I the way I do this is I'm a little bit non-traditional. I just do whatever feels good to me, which is I start the V from here. And usually by the time I reach there, I get full depth. And then I come back and get to full depth here. And I should add this. This needs to be an inch and a half deep. So, now comes the brute work. All I'm going to do, get the chisel started like that. And I do this just to be sure that I don't have an out of square mortise. Once that's stuck in like that, I bring the square. Actually, I'll do it on this side. You can so what I should say is you can sight down the side of the chisel and the side of the piece, and you can tell where it's pretty well straight. But what I like to do is take a square and hold it up and make sure it's at least parallel with this face, the side of the chisel, to know I'm getting a straight mortise. So I'll do that. I sort of grab the mortise chisel, straighten up what I need to, and then just get to chopping. And as you go, it'll straighten itself out. So I only check every couple chops, because you can sort of use the previous cut as a guide, and always sight down the piece. Pry up. That go there. So then now I'm going to get this next cut started again. And just to make sure we're on track, I'm going to recheck. And yep, shows I'm going parallel. Chop down until it starts to bottom out and lever out the chips. And I'm going to do the same thing again. And lever out the chips. As you see, the chips just come out like in a little stack like that. This isn't finesse work. This is just get the job done, get down to depth work. It doesn't have to be pretty because it all gets hit. As long as it's true, that's all that matters. So now again, I'll check. A little bit out of square. So I'll fix it. And lever out all that waste like that again. Then now that slope's getting a little shallow. So I'll just... Make it a little bit more vertical again. While trying to get down to depth. And just lever that out. It can be a little tough, but not hard to deal with. And then I like to come back and clear up. This gets a little ragged in here. I like to clear that out. Pry up. Get those chips cleared out of there. And now we got a nice little V-shape down in there. And I like to do the Joshua Klein method of checking the depth, which is just take a knife because it's got a nice fine point. You can't really stick a ruler in at this point. So I stick that right down to the point because it's basically a V-shape in here right now. Take that out, pinch my fingers, and I check my depth. So right now I'm about, I have a quarter inch more to go in depth. Take my mortar chisel. And sometimes it gets stuck and you can't lever out. That's fine. Come back this way. It doesn't matter. You can rock it on the bevel or go straight in like this. It doesn't matter. Each way works. Get almost down to the bottom. Pop those chips out. I'm going to start going not with the bevel. Because it gets too much of a slope. Get the square. Check again. Make any adjustments you need to make. And pry the chips out that way and sometimes you have to flip the chisel around to get the right angle on prying those chips out there we go and come back in here again sometimes the chisel will sort of get stuck down there if you get a little carried away that's fine come back in the other side 
pry it up like that. So now I'm going to double check again. See what I got for depth. An eighth away now. Only got a little bit more to go. And I'm going to come back over this side and get this wall a little bit straighter down. And then take that. Sometimes you need to really reef on these, especially in hard maple that this is. And pry that chip right out of there. Because essentially what you're doing is splitting off the very bottom of the hole to a flat surface. Down here, same thing. Gotta put your back into this. <laughs> Get those chips pried right out of there. Okay. So now when I'm at that point, so now this is getting to be sort of a U shape, but these sides are still angled a bit. Let's check that again. And there, I'm just at depth. So I just, I'm gonna go a little bit further to make sure I have clearance down there. So I'm gonna take this. Go back down. Get that chip popped out of there. And now I should be past depth in a good way. And then come here, go straight up and down. Check sight on this way, make sure we're going straight. And I'm still not at my line yet. Pry that way. Work the chisel out. Like that. Then when I'm almost right at my line, I come in. I go just a bit past it to give us some wiggle room. And then I get it going a little bit past 90. So that this is small. There's a smaller space down here than there is up here. So that when that straight 90 degree tenon goes in there, it has room and it won't get bound up. Bottomed out, push forward. And in my case, this top shoulder is gonna be covered by the tenon piece. So it can be just disregarded and smushed a little bit there. It's not gonna matter. It's all gonna be hidden. Come back in here and do the same thing down this side. I like to take my hammer and tap the chisel side to side to get it right where I need to get it. At depth, pry out, then come in here a bit straighter. Not going back any further, but going straighter down. Bottom down again, pry forward. Sometimes these chisels can get a little bit stuck, but they're meant to be pried on, so don't be afraid to pry on them. Like that. And then we'll come right in on my line. And again, it'll push past the line a bit, but that's fine. And we'll come down here, get my chisel straight. We'll do one final check here. I should have done it on the other side, but I'm going straight anyway. So there, and then I'm gonna lean this. So it's past 90 again. I'm gonna clean that up. So that's how you chop a mortise by hand with a pig sticker. I'm gonna go in here, clean the chips out. Whoops, drop the chisel. I get down in here, clean the chips out. I'll go in here with the bevel facing the wall so I have something to lever against at the bottom. Pull those chips out. I'll do the same thing down this side. Lever against the bottom. And there. That is how you get a mortise and a piece of hard maple. And it should be oversized, and the sides should be a little bit dovetail shaped out this way so that the tenon will fit in there. And uh, check the depth right there. We are about an eighth past half, which is just where we want to be. So there, that's a rough idea of how to chop a mortise. Um, I know it probably wasn't super clear or super exact. I just wanted to give a quick rundown of how I chop a mortise, and it might not be traditional, but it gets the job done and gets me down to the bottom. So I hope you liked it and I'll do a more exact video on mortising at a later date. Thank you. Have a great day.